Hello, my name's Mark and I am GK Tutor. I'm here with Practical Machinist to look at the third in this series of Back to Basic with G-Code. Now this will probably be the last video in this because after this point we can get more complicated. So I want to start off by looking at all the different functions available for G-Code. As you can see here, we've got program numbers, block numbers, G-code, M-code coordinates, radio coordinates, radio coordinates, center point coordinates, spindle, feed rate, tools, and cycle definitions. So let's have a look at all of these and what they mean. So let's start off by looking at our program number. So the program number can often be confused with a zero, but it actually starts with a letter O, followed by two zeros and a one here. Okay, so next up we have N, block number. So the block number is what we use to number each line of code. Well, we used to. Now we tend to use them as a search function or as a way to call upon a, a part of the program, such as a subroutine. So I always start off each sequence with an N number that matches my tool number. This makes it very easy to search on FANUC. We just type, we know we're using tool one, so we type N1, down arrow on the FANUC controls, and it will search to this section of code. Very good tip there for finding for scanning around your code quickly. So after our end number there, we've got an operator's note in brackets. So in this case, it's what this sequence is about. So it's letting us know it's a rough turn sequence. And at the end of that, we've got that semicolon there, which is the end of block sequence, which we find after every line of code. It tells the machine it's time to move on and read the next line. Okay, so next on our list here is G-code. Well, we all know what G-code is. It's why we're here. It's the actual programming language, but the it uses G codes and that's where it gets its name from. So um, not to be confused, some people call it G and M code. M code is also a function in G code, but the language is generally known as G code. Okay, so what I've highlighted here is a safety line. I've uh, got videos, goes into this more depth with Practical Machinist. But just briefly, the G54 there sets the work shift datum. The G53 is the machine datum. Then we control um, whether an absolute or incremental, um, uh, metric or imperial. G7, G97 controls the spindle speed, it's two different modes. We've got G80 to make sure there's no cycles currently active and G40 to make sure there's no cutter compensation active. So this always sets the machine up into a safe state. So if we start from the beginning in a sequence, it's like starting a program from scratch, everything's gonna run fine. And I always keep my sequences like this. So each sequence can be run individually without needing to run the whole program each time. Great if you need to rerun at all. Okay, next up is M codes. So there's less standard M codes than what there is G codes. Um, the two in this example program, it stands out at the moment is coolant on and coolant off with MO8 and MO9. If you've got flood coolant, mist coolant, different types of coolant, you'll have different M codes for these also. But generally, MO8 turns them all on, depending on the machine. We can also control our spindle with uh, M codes too. So these are all auxiliary functions. So we can turn the spindle on and off and run it forwards and backwards with these M codes. So next up is our coordinates, our X, Y, Z, U, V, W. So we all know the X, Y, Zs is, is the positions we move around in the 3D environment. The U, V, W can also be used. These are generally incremental moves, certainly on laves, but they're um, acts there auxiliary axes moves so they can be used for all sorts of things and it depends on the program and the machine but if you want to move in incremental a lot of the times we can use u instead of x and that saves us switching to incremental mode but again depends on the machine and the style it's, it's made in so you can see here there's some examples of my coordinates again this is a lathe program so there's no y it's just x and z and and after the go1 uh, we don't need to issue G01 again. It, it stays active all the time until we change that G code function. So if we change to a G00, for example, we'd have to reinstate the G01. That's a small example of where it would be used. Okay, so next up we've got radial coordinates. What's this? Well, when we're coming in to turn a clockwise or anti-clockwise radius, we can use an R value to designate the size of that radius. And that's what that is. Okay, so we also have center point coordinates, I, J, and K. Now these are used for the same sort of thing. What these do is they designate the center point of that radius so we can do more complex radiuses. We can do blends, we can do tangential um, blends that curve into each other, and we can 
be a lot more creative with the way we create arcs. So that's what I and J is used for. K is on the Z axis. And we tend to use this for more complex curves and radiuses. Okay, so next up, S, spindle speed. So we control our spindle speed by giving it an S value. It's as simple as that. By defining S1000 here, our spindle is going to start up in a clockwise direction because it's followed there by the MO3. Now we have feed rate. So feed rate. After a GO1 command, we have to issue a feed rate so the machine knows how far to move. It depends if we are working in millimeters per rev of the spindle, such as we tend to do on a lathe, or whether it's meters per minute or inches per minute that we would do on a miller machine. So if we issue a GO1 command, we have to issue a feed rate. We don't need to keep issuing that feed rate. That will stay active until we change that feed rate. Okay, so now we have tool. So this is our tool designation number. T0101. Now again, this is more suited to lathes. On a mill, you probably see T1 without the rest of the numbers. So it's still called in tool one, and it gets that information um, about the tool data elsewhere. But on most lathes, if we say T01, that's defining the tool. And then the second two digits there is the tool geometry. It's pulling from the datum table in the machine to get that geometry so it knows how to apply cutter compensation, etc. So that's why we have two lots of numbers here. Now, they don't always have to be the same. We could have tool one with offset 25, and that would pull that data from the table um, using the 25 position and not the one position. But it, it's best to keep them both the same, um, unless you're using the same tool with two different offsets. And finally, we've got cycle definitions, I, K, P, Q, R, etc. So these change depending on the situation. Like U always doesn't mean the same thing. It's not always an auxiliary axis. If you're using it in a roughing cycle, for example, it means something totally different. And it also changes meanings twice in one line, as it does here. So there is no definite value for U, R, P, Q and W, they can change if we are using cycles and the cycle reads them in a certain way. So be aware of that. Don't always assume R is the radius because if it's used in a uh, sequence, if it's used in a cycle, it may not be. So if you want to know more about G-code programming, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com where I have a range of paid and free courses to teach you how to program G-code, computer aid design, machine shop maths. In fact, there's uh, 12 courses there that cover all sorts of machine shop skills. So pop over and have a look. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at G-code Tutor.